Hello and welcome to Oz Trader Chat. Today is the 24th of May and uh, as always we need to start our Trader Chat with a run through of our disclaimers which are legally obliged. The first disclaimer tells us that all trading involves risk. Please be aware of and accept this risk before trading and never trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. Past performance of any trading methodology you should realize is no guarantee of future results and no representation is being made in this webinar that uh, any account will achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed. Finally, you should be aware that all results should be considered to be hypothetical unless otherwise specified, and hypothetical performance results have many inherent limitations, and unlike an actual performance record, do not represent actual trading. A few pointers about using NetViewers for uh, NetViewer, the software for the people who are new to Trader Chat. First thing uh, you should know is that the best way of asking a question is to type a message into the chat window. If you cannot hear me, try sliding your speaker slider further to the right, um, which boosts the volume of the NetViewer session separate to your system uh, volume. Uh, if you'd like to speak to me, right click. Also, please enter a chat message. And um, speaking of mouse clicks, be a little careful of them because they pop up brightly colored arrows. Um, uh, although it is encouraging to know people are still there sometimes, but uh, be a little careful if you can of mouse clicks. Okay, so let's move on and let's take a look at, um, at the markets and what the markets are doing and so on and so forth. Um, for those of you who are new to Trader Chat, uh, this is our Oz Trader Chat, which means it is targeted at people who are in um, uh, in the Asian time zone, and we always discuss the Australian market to some extent in um, in the Australia chat. Uh, today, I plan to speak a little bit about the Nasdaq market as well, and take a look at an analysis of the Nasdaq market, and see what comparisons can be drawn um, between the Australian market, the Nasdaq market, and of course the S&P 500, which we will be taking a glance at. I know that many of you who are with mm. us today were also with us yesterday, so I'm not going to spend uh, too long talking about um, uh, the S&P 500. Uh, this is a casual format um, presentation, although I tend to be the one that uh, goes on and on uh, most of the time. Uh, I would be very happy to hear any comments that you have, any um, ideas that you might have about what's going on in the market, or any questions. Um, whether you have any really beginner questions or more advanced questions, this is a forum for people who are currently using Sentient Trader, and I'm very pleased to see some um, experienced uh, expert users of Sentient Trader with us today, and um, it's also a forum for people who have no idea what Sentient Trader is um, and would like to know more about Sentient Trader or learn more about Hearst Cyclic Principles, which are the principles that, uh, of course, Sentient Trader um, users to analyze uh, the markets and also to trade them, also to provide trading signals. So let's take a look at the Australian market. This is, of course, the analysis that we've been looking at um, every week. Um, uh, I will just, for the sake of completeness, uh, zoom out and present the longer-term picture, at least the longer picture in terms of uh, this particular analysis and, and what we're looking at here. And um, let me turn on some semicircles, and I will show you, of course, the analysis that we've been looking at uh, uh, recently, which is that there was a trough of the four-and-a-half-year cycle. Now, um, Hearst Cyclic Principles are all about identifying what cycles are active in the market and when their troughs were formed. Um, other cyclic um, uh, um, theories... Uh, we'll often spend a lot of time identifying when peaks are formed. Um, analyzing market using her cycle principles, it is very important to identify, obviously, when the peaks are formed. That is when you should be either going short or certainly exiting your long trading positions. Um, but um, in terms of performing a cyclic analysis, we don't actually identify those peaks in the cyclic analysis. Um, peaks are identified um, for trading purposes, um, but a cyclic analysis performed using her cyclic principles identifies the position of the troughs. The reason for that is because one of her cyclic principles is that the troughs of cycles are synchronized, whereas the peaks are not. It's a, um, it's a mathematical thing, if you like. Um, either troughs or peaks need to be synchronized when you have cycles that have harmonic, uh, harmonically related wavelengths. It's a very simple uh, mathematical thing. 
um, if you have harmonically related cycles um, and uh, two harmonically related cycles are present, then either the, the, the troughs or the peaks will be synchronized um, on a regular basis, assuming that the wavelengths don't change. Okay, so um, uh, so uh, here's the analysis, and uh, of course, if we um, uh, draw a few little arrows on here, here is the four and a half year cycle according to this analysis in March of 2009. Um, the great thing about analyzing markets using her cycle principles is that um, um, the theory is very robust in that as long as you um, uh, uh, present a good analysis, um, somebody else might present a different analysis. Hearst himself said many times that, that um, different Hearst analysts um, or different analysts using Hearst cycle principles will, will produce different analyses, but often at the end of the day their trading decisions are the same. So in other words, the end result is the same. So um, there can be a lot of healthy debate about uh, the positioning of some troughs. Um, particularly the longer term troughs and there is a constant ongoing debate at the moment um, uh, which you can read about on our forum and um, in these trader chats sometimes some of our um, uh, experienced users have been uh, uh, making a few comments um, about whether the trough in March of 2009 was a trough of the four and a half year cycle or maybe the nine year cycle and um, some people are even um, mentioning um, fairly quietly that uh, uh, could it be a trough of the 18-year cycle, which uh, seems unlikely. But at any, any rate, according to this analysis, the longest cycle that we have analyzed in this analysis is the four-and-a-half-year cycle, and that trough occurred in 2009. What is expected to happen to the four-and-a-half-year cycle? Well, it's expected to f follow a form similar to the orange line that you see. These are semicircles that we're plotting on the chart. So, of course, it's expected to go up over here, it was expected to top, or in other words, form a peak somewhere around about um, early 2011, and then it's expected to move down to the trough which we are expecting towards the beginning of next year or perhaps the end of this year. Okay, there is variation in cycle wavelengths, and it's a very important principle, something you need to be constantly aware of. So although the um, cycles, the four and a half year cycle is always present in every market, its wavelength will vary from one market to another and from one iteration of the cycle to another iteration of the cycle. So if we zoomed out on this chart, we could see how long the previous 54 month cycle was. And, um, and you should know that um, cycle lengths uh, will always vary, of course. So that's why there is a range of time in which the next um, trough is expected. Now, uh, the next shorter cycle in what is called the nominal model, the nominal model is very simply a list of cycles that are present in the market. And the next shorter cycle, shorter than the 54-month cycle or four-and-a-half-year cycle, is the 18-month cycle. There are, of course, three times 18 months in every 54 months. So therefore, three 18-month cycles play out or elapse within every single 54-month cycle. And you can see them here. Again, according to this analysis, there's the first one with a, um, a trough in, um, in uh, May or June of 2010. And uh, there's the second one with a trough uh, probably in October of 2011. And we are now in the third and final 18-month cycle, um, which has been rising, um, or should I say was rising, um, out of the October 2011 trough. And um, it has uh, almost certainly turned down and is heading down to the trough. Okay, so um, at the most sort of basic um, uh, level, the big picture level that we always look at first, what is happening? Well, presently, the 54 month cycle, the four and a half year cycle, is causing prices to move downwards. Okay, which means that that cycle is putting downwards pressure on the market. The 18 month cycle is also moving downwards. They're both moving downwards uh, towards the trough expected at the end of this year or early next year. Okay, so the bigger picture is obviously um, that uh, those cycles are pushing downwards. Now, that is probably not terribly surprising to you. It's not big news. You're not going to rush out and, uh, and uh, publish it um, because, uh, as you all know, the Australian markets have been falling for um, two weeks. Uh, I think we're into the third week of, of, that, uh, uh, of that fall. Now, um, I, I don't know what's happening in the Australian press, 
um, that um, this week started off with a you know, bit of a bit of upward movement, and it's quite possible that um, that um, some analysts and uh, particularly the media might have started saying, you know, the dark days are over, the market's turning around. So, um, as an analyst and a trader, you want to look at the market very carefully and say, is the market turning around? The answer, I will spoil the, the fun now by telling you, I think the answer is no. Um, but let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. Um, uh, nevertheless, um, um, it's always important to bear in mind the longer term picture. And the longer term picture until the end of this year is that the four and a half year cycle is pushing downwards and the 18 month cycle is pushing downwards. Now, um, a question that we often get in trader chats um, is, you know, are the longer cycles more important than the shorter cycles? And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting question, and it's quite an important one, actually, um, because obviously the longer cycles cause bigger moves, and um, um, uh, uh, the shorter cycles cause much uh, smaller moves, okay? And so if a 40-day cycle is bouncing up, as it possibly might be at the moment, um, then that's likely to cause a small amount of upward movement. But that upward movement, you must understand, is, um, is occurring within the context of all the other cycles. It's a very important concept of her cyclic principles that um, multiple cycles, in fact an infinite number of cycles, influence uh, the price movement of financial markets. So if the 40-day cycle is moving up, um, that's one piece of information out of, a, out, out of an infinite number of pieces of information that you really need to completely understand the market. We don't know what all the infinite cycles are doing, but we know what quite a lot of them are doing. And in this particular analysis, we know what cycles from five days all the way up to four and a half years are doing. So that's quite a, a good amount of information. But it's important to bear in mind whenever the market bounces up over the next um, six, uh, seven, eight months, every time the market uh, bounces up, it's important to keep at the back of your mind the fact that the 18-month cycle is still pushing downwards and the 54-month cycle is still pushing downwards. Now, cycles tend to vary in their strength. What's the